Okay, so again, uh, yeah, field API, three parts. This is part one and two. Um, so since we're not going to be doing so much code stuff, or at least we will, just like going through it really, really fast, um, we'll have probably a little more time for like questions. And uh, I want to try something new. If you have a question while I'm talking, uh, go ahead and just throw it up on Twitter, and I'll get a little alert. And uh, maybe I can just uh, like smoothly transition into your response. So it kind of seems like it was part of the discussion in the first place. So hopefully it's not a, a big distraction. So let's see how that goes. <laughs> All right. What's that? It was doing that before, even. Hey, I don't know. But anyway, all right, so we're talking about field types. So um, we get into a situation where, say, we get like a, a spec, right? This is like a comp that we have. So the client specification is we need to collect some information. Now, typically, obviously, we don't collect credit card information, but this is just like as an example, right? So, you know, we go into the role of, all right, I'm a site builder. What am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and create like, you know, some sort of entity or some content type and then just go ahead and start like attaching fields to it, right? So this is pretty typical configurations, right? So considering that we had, you know, credit card type and credit card number and CVS code, right? This is a pretty standard operation that we do here, right? Or wrong, right? Yes? Yeah, on the screen. Wait, wait. Oh, there's Security with all of those big numbers an issue? What big numbers? Like credit card numbers. Oh, is that is that a security issue? Well, I'm just saying, like, you know, I'm not trying to TTPS or I didn't know if that's what you're asking. That's not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is like super, yeah. So this is like just the fictional, like maybe this would be like contact information or something else. Oh, I just kind of clustering together a group of fields to kind of like make some sort of conceptual thing. Um, but what I was saying is like this kind of, you know, strategy, like when we see this thing on a spec, we go and create a content type or whatever it is and add fields to it. Pretty much like this, right? It's pretty standard operations. It's what everybody does and talks about. And uh, when we build this, right, we take a look at the back end of it. Right, this is the database results. That's how many tables were produced out of it, right? And, you know, that's a pretty common thing, right? You know, it's no big deal, right? We have like the data tables, and we have revisions tables for that particular concept. And like at this point, it's not a huge deal. Standard procedure, right? But let's say we're building, hey, you know, an actual site, right? We got a lot of stuff going on in here. Like we could have like components like that and components like that over there. I don't really know what they are, but you know, just we're collecting information and we're like associating them to some sort of profile, some sort of content type. Or say even you're like migrating some shop and they have like a paper format way of collecting information and they want to turn this into like a digital format, right? We're moving all this stuff to the site. We're going to have to do forms like that right there. And probably instinctively, since it's all kind of going into like some sort of a node or like entity, we're going to create these in fields, right? But as you could imagine, right, at the very end of the project when we're done, we have a lot of fields in here, right? And a lot of database tables. And I mean, at the beginning, I didn't think I was going to have all these different tables. No one, you know, told me that this was going to happen. So for a lot of sites, this is perfectly fine, right? Setting up the database and just delivering it, that's totally cool. But for me, I guess, like, I come to a certain point where, like, man, there's a lot of tables here. I kind of feel like I, I don't know, given, like, the size and complexity of a site, maybe there was, like, a more efficient way of doing this. I, feel, I don't necessarily feel proud that there's, like, 300 tables here, right? No one <laughs> asks you, oh, how many tables? You? Oh, I've got 300. <laughs> because maybe, I don't know, maybe you have, like, this innate feeling that, Maybe there's a better way, right? Maybe there's like you know some sort of more efficient workflow in this case. Um, so let's see what the next slide is. So step back for a second. I want to talk about like the concept of information, right? When we're collecting all this data, um, fields, right? We grab this stuff like whatever Drupal gives us. We have like a text field, an image field. Maybe we have like a select box for you know the the month or the year, right? And these are all fields that we get from Core. And uh, just give me one second. Look at this. The thing is, though, we treat all this data as if it was like individual pieces of information on its own. But really, these pieces don't really exist on their own, right? Together, they compile a concept of information. It's an idea, right? And we conceptually group these things and kind of make it into a thing. But this usually involves a lot of like alters and a lot of theming overrides to actually achieve something like this, right? But the thing is that we have to remember is that these this, these pieces of data are meaningless on their own, right? What exactly is a CVV code field on its own? What kind of information does that provide you? Absolutely nothing. These fields, this data, doesn't exist except for, the, uh, except for within the relationship of each other, right? 
Um, but just still, we have this conceptual idea that they do. And so we kind of imply maybe functionality because of this, right? We assume that these things are going to go together. But the thing is, Drupal has no idea that field A has anything to do with field B, right? There's no like congruency between each other. There's, there's nothing to do with each other. There's no coherency. So we have to do a lot of work, like I mentioned, to kind of achieve this type of thing, right? And when you ask somebody in the Drupal community, like, what can I do to, you know, I have this thing out of the box, right? What can I do to achieve this customization? And you can do this in one of two ways, right? You can either alter some sort of hook, or you can override a thing, right? And at that point, you can do anything you want, right? You can do anything you want, right? And that's a kind of scary thing, because you can, like, branch away from the Drupal way of doing things and get lost completely. You have no support over what kind of custom code you have on your site. Right? And for something like this, this is a base structure in your site. This is like a core concept. It's, it, you know, you're probably going to have other things that extend on top of this. But this thing was built out of the box, out of like basically stick and muds to put this thing together. Right? And this becomes increasingly difficult to maintain and to, to build. And um, well, it's custom code. And you really can't go too far uh, with that ideology. Um, so. When you think about this, I mean, how many different pieces of information do you have in a complete site that does stuff like this, right? There's probably quite a bit, right? A lot of content types. And this might become sort of an overload at the end of the project, where now you're not necessarily doing, like, maybe these cool plugins or, like, you know, building layers of things together. You're actually just kind of making, like, one-off pieces and a bunch of one-off pieces and gluing them together. And you might end up, I don't know, spending a lot of time writing code that you don't necessarily feel proud of. And, uh, you know, of course, there's that long QA phase. It's just, it's a, it's, a, it's a question of sanity, right? You don't really want to spend your time doing this kind of work. You want to actually invest time doing some nice plugins or, like, doing some sort of a structure that is extendable and maybe even contributable if you abstract it enough. So um, I guess that was my talk regarding the concept of that. Um, this is, uh, like I mentioned, part one and two of uh, things, and I'm kind of recycling uh, slides from different talks that I've done in the past. Um, so now we're actually going to talk about actually creating like these field types, right? And so just for like quick clarity, uh, a field type, as far as Drupal is concerned, is just a way of you know saving like a bit of information in a field, right? And we looked at some previous slides. Uh, I guess I removed it. Damn. You see all the different like. Uh, column information and like a fields table. Uh, who is not familiar with what the schema looks like of one of these tables? Everyone's familiar that like these tables, they have references to the entity and like to the bundle type and to the entity ID and like maybe the language and the delta and then finally you get to the actual value that you want, right? This is a lot of information that's stored just for one of these fields, not counting the actual revisions, right? But in terms of like a field type, if you were to create your own, say, this concept, we can kind of put all of these fields together, like a, a form field, right? You have your own custom form using the form API, and cluster this information together, where we have like the credit card and the CVV code and the expiration and the billing zip code all in one field because, you know, together they actually produce a piece of information, right? So that's what a field type is, actually making like a set of data work as if it was like one piece, like one whole unit of information. All right. Uh, what if you run into the case where, like, oh, you want to add another? Uh, it's kind of hard to do when you have a lot of different fields all working independently, right? Um, so field types API, it's big good stuff. Uh, the first thing you want to do, and now we're going to get into the actual code, is you want to implement hook field info. And all this stuff is doing is basically just describing, like, what it is, giving it a label. Uh, with these fields, right, you can have, like, different stages, like a, you know, a multi-step form where you can define certain settings for your fields data schema. And then you could also create like some settings for like the instantiation of the field. Right? You know how you can like share fields across different content types? Each one of those is an instance of that field. And you can have like custom settings for that. So like that field behaves a certain way. So you can do that with instance settings. And then we have a default widget and a default formatter. Right? And this is just lingual for saying like a default widget is the form that I'm going to present. Right? This is how the user inputs information. And a formatter, a field formatter, well, that's how the data is outputted. Right? And the field formatter talk is tomorrow. So what is the differences between fields and instances? Um, again, this is just overloaded lingo inside of Drupal. A field would be like the construction of like the schema of like say we have the credit card number and we have the year and the month of expiration and 
Like maybe we don't need to know like the CVV type, right? Um, so in this field settings, right, we would say that we don't need the CVV type, so we can maybe just like uncheck it. And then the schema is completely different now, where we're just, we don't have that, that, that particular column in that field. Um, but with an instance, however, it's not necessarily talking about like the data that's stored in it. It's more of, um, I guess, like say for instance, like we have like an image field, and that has an instance setting of describing like what would be the default image if no image was provided, right? The schema stays the same. We're still saving a file ID, right, an FID, but we're just kind of giving it more instructions as far as like, well, what do I do in case this happens, right? It's just like an extra feature. So that's the difference between differences between the fields and the instances. Um, next step we do is we invoke hook field schema, and this is where I would look at code um, to kind of show you what that is, and uh, I will go back into that in a little bit. Show you some code later. Other things that we need to do is hook field validate and hook field is empty. So the deal with hook field validate, although we have like forms that we can do like our own element validation and say like when certain values are passed in and when it's okay, right? And that typically works for you know every UI. But what if you are adding in content programmatically, right? It wouldn't go through the form API. So how would you, you know, validate that information if it was going in through Drush? So you kind of have a responsibility, like when you're creating these field elements, to validate to make sure that you don't get like any crazy errors in the database, and basically say that this data is sane. So that's what you would do in hook field validate. So we'll go over that in the code. Hook field empty is empty is basically your way of describing how uh, Drupal will know when it's appropriate to remove a field or to keep it. Right? And you've seen like when you're adding another, adding another, if you were to remove like the contents of one of those fields, when you save the form and then you come back to it, those fields are gone, right? That's how Drupal knew when to delete something. And within this form, all you're basically saying is like returning true or false. When I don't have a button that says collect information, don't save anything at all, right? Regardless of if there is data in the rest of the fields, if that checkbox is turned off, then none of that stuff really matters, right? So that's how you do that. And also there's a lot of other hooks too for like hook field load, hook field, you know, pre-save, hook field insert. Like there's a lot of operations that happen when you're loading a field and you can just kind of pop in and do some extra stuff here. So, oh yeah, and there's another thing too where you can, um, you know, you can add in some extra fields so you can manage them in the field UI, but that's outside of the scope of this. So questions so far? Let's look into some code. All right, so. I have a question about like, to what extent is it possible um, in V6 with CCK? Basically everything. Yeah, basically like everything you can, almost everything you can do in Drupal 7 as far as the field API, you can do that within CCK. Their hooks are like nearly identical. Ah. So I should have pulled this stuff in earlier. All right, so I have a module called Phonesies, and that's going to be our demo code. I'm just going to pop that out of this project and go into some other place. Yeah. Just dropping in that module. All right, cool. Demo code. All right, All right so you probably want to see what this thing actually looks like. Go test sites. We have a content type, customer. I'm going to manage the fields. Uh, Okay, great. So phonesies was basically uh, a way of collecting a phone number. That's it. 
And with this phone number, um, I want to describe whether if it's like a cell number, if it's like a home number, if it's an office number, if it's like an international phone number. Because all these different bits of, bits of information might require additional stuff. Right? So I've configured this field. I just added it. right? And this is the step where I'm adding like the instance fields. Right? And here, my setting would be the phone type. So we have home, mobile, fax, office, international. And I'm going to say this is a mobile number. right? And I'm also going to say enable the carrier. Right, this is a contextual type of configuration. So I enable the carrier, and now I could actually like save the information of whether if this is like from T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon. So go ahead and save this, and let's go check out the page. Let's see what that widget looks like. Add content. Skip all this stuff. Cool. So we have phone number, and then we can say that hey, this is Verizon, Sprint, whatever you want. So because of that configuration, if we look into the code, oh, not the code, the database, we can see in our schema for that particular field, field phone. All this information is pretty much de facto standard, but we get to here, phone number and phone mobile carrier, that was the data that I intended to save. Right? Let's go back into that, that field settings form because I want to change the settings of this, where this is not a type mobile, but now this is a type of office. And I want to enable the extensions, because now I'm saving phone extensions. We'll save that. We go back to our schema. Notice the phone mobile carrier is going to change to phone office extension. right? So this field is reusable in a lot of different ways. But it was the same core code, right? the same core concept. It's still going to be used as a mobile phone, so I can still display it certain ways, but now I'm saving information just slightly different. Right? So likewise with a bunch of other settings here as well. Um, let me install something. That's a pretty cool module. So I enabled a module called uh, select or other. Right? Because we have particular client needs. And I'm going to go back to the mobile number itself. Save that. Come back over here, refresh the page. So we're saving mobile numbers with the addition of the select or other. I can say other, and it's going to save uh, Drupal phone. Go ahead and save that. No. Drupal phone. Cool. I'll save. Come over here. Now we have the Drupal phone inside the mobile carrier, right? So we added in some, you know, other module integration stuff. Um, but again, this is all within a very simple place. Uh, the point is, you don't necessarily have to do this in a form altar somewhere else. You don't necessarily have to do this inside of a theme somewhere else, because that becomes really hard to maintain, right? Um, when you have a concept of a thing going on, it's probably a good idea to keep all these things together in a centralized place for the sake of sanity, right? You don't want to be looking around for the CSS file and the theme when your, you know, your markup is coming from like a module. Uh, this is a concept with like I don't know like a strategy of how you build your your features right. You want to kind of nest things together where it makes sense. Um, and again, this is kind of the same thing too. You want to integrate other modules and do these exceptions and abstract certain things, but all from a centralized place, and it's very very easy to maintain. So you have an idea of like what this field does, right? You you see the final uh, uh, the final outcome, and you see what the, what we're trying to approach. Uh, now let's actually look at the code that produced this, right? So go ahead and zoom this in. And as you can see, there's really not that much code. Let me... <laughs> okay. There's about, like, mm, give or take, three, 285 lines of code, right, to, to do this. Think about how much lines of code you have to do for customizations somewhere else, right? So hook field information. We're basically passing in an array, right? Uh, and describing this is phonesies, that's my machine name, and here's my label and my description, and here's some settings. In the settings array, you're basically defining like all the default values, uh, so that way like your settings form 
uh, default values don't puke, so it knows what's, what to do. Uh, there's no instance settings in this case. I'm saying the default widget is this, Bonesy's defaults, and then Bonesy's default over here for the default formatter. These could be two different names. It's just I'm using the same name because, you know, it's a default widget. It's not going to be like a namespace conflict because they're two different things anyway, right? Uh, those machine names are referenced somewhere else, so I'll talk about that in a second. This is hook field settings form. Again, this is just what you're used to already with the form API, right? You're just defining your own stuff. And so in this place, you can get really fancy with the type of things you do. You can do Ajaxy forms. Um, you can do like stuff that involves like the form state where you have like conditional things in your UI. Um, so that's a pretty neat thing to do. And then we have, well, obviously these are all the different options, right? We have like mobile carrier enabled, uh, office extension enabled, uh, you know, the country codes, blah, blah, blah. I have a big to do on the field validation. Uh, within the, the field validation, basically what you do is you, uh, you run a for each uh, for all the different items you have. So items as item delta. And for each one of these items, and this item, like if you have like a compound field like this that has a lot of multiple, has multiple data that's stored within this field, um, basically it's going to be an array of all these values. And you just kind of check, make sure everything is okay. This is a number, you know, this is a string, this is supposed to be, you know, some value from zero to nine, whatever you want. And if this fails, it's going to throw up not necessarily like a form set error, but it's going to kind of populate an array of errors that have machine names within them because we really want to pass in that data, like that information that, hey, there was an error to the widget, right? The widget that's actually managing the UI for this because the field validator has no idea that there is a widget anyway, right? It doesn't exactly know which like form element to target to say, you know, highlight this red, right? So this has been abstracted out. You're returning just a, you know, a, a, an alert. And uh, you can see the field validates what this looks like. Right, for each item's delta value, checking if it's empty or not. If it's empty and if it doesn't validate with the settings that I have, create this array of errors, say what the error is, and then give like a message to it, and then let the widget figure out what to do with it. Right? That's all you really have to do with the with the hook field widget validate. Knock all this stuff out, and we get to the hook field is empty. Right? And we're just saying, if there's no phone number, then just kind of delete it, right? Even if there is like a mobile carrier that's been configured, it doesn't really matter because that value is irrelevant, you know, if there's no number. So this is the only thing I really need to check with, you know, if it's empty or not. Once Drupal's given this instructions, then it basically just cans it when it's not necessary. So that's all it takes to create field data, field types. That's all it is, right? This approach is a lot cleaner, a lot better than having to, you know, I don't know, create a bunch of fields, text fields, and try to mash them all together. So now let's go into the field widget hook part of it. So we have hook field widget info, right? Basically the same structure. We're defining the label and description, seeing if we have any settings associated with them. Uh, the behaviors for the most part can be ignored um, because I kind of keep forgetting what these actually mean. Sorry. <laughs> But here in the hook field widget form, we actually define the form that gets presented inside of the node edit form, right? So here is where we can get really creative as far as what kind of UIs we want. This could be like a drag and drop interface. It could be like something that's HTML5 elements if we wanted to, right? We can do anything we want here. And what's really cool is that these widgets and these field formatters, you can swap these out, right? And you still maintain the same like data collection, you know, structure, right? You're still grabbing this data. You can still do things with it inside of views, but it's just the way you're inputting this information is slightly different. So for now, I just have like a really boring, you know, field uh, widget that uh, just, you know, it's a select box and it's a text field here, uh, but it's going to be something, you know, completely cool. It really doesn't matter so long. It's still a form internally. You can do jQuery UI and just have a lot of fun with this. Because, I mean, this is essentially what your clients will be using when they're inputting their information, right? They get really impressed with, you know, really nice widgets and swishy, swishy stuff, right? So go forth and do stuff like that. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, this, is, uh, this form is a little extensive because, you know, we have a lot of uh, conditional things, right? You, you notice that there was, like, a checkbox that, like, turns some fields on and off, right? This is, like, form states uh, stuff in 777, so that's why there's a lot of code here. Uh, but not necessarily to add complexity to this whole content. And then we get into hook field formatters. 
which uh, I'm not going to talk about because that's tomorrow. But um, yeah, so the idea of why you want to actually go this route instead of like the other route, right? What is the typical other route? If you go back into the slides, we had somewhere in here. Oh, you know what? Before I even got to the code, there was another slide for field widgets. Or I'm just kind of describing what is a field widget and why it's so cool. So you can go about like creating field widgets and field formatters without even doing any of the field API stuff to save data, right? Uh, say, for instance, you have a text field that collects a phone number, right? And you want to make it easy for them to, you know, basically input a phone number. Um, I wrote a module called masked input that basically, like, puts in the parentheses and the dashes where they belong. So it's really easy to, like, show the, you know, the user what kind of format they need to, like, you know, type in their stuff. Um, so you can do that just within a field widget, and it's like just only two hooks, the info and then the actual settings form. And you can pop this in place into the default text field that comes with Drupal, right? So you don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel or anything like that. You're just adding in that particular component for your use case. So a field widget, um, this is where I started talking about like what is the field API. And I described it um, to my team as being a three-legged spider, where it's like a, a widget you know, the formatter and then like the core data and like without one of these threes, uh, it, it's, a, it's a messed up spider. Um, all right, so what are the field widgets? Uh, <laughs> what are widgets made of? Um, I already showed you the code, right? So you, you already know it's really, really simple, but again, I'll reiterate for the sake of this slide. Um, we have the info hook, right? And then we have the settings, and these are completely optional settings where we can manipulate what the form is going to look like, right? And then we have the actual form element that goes into that. So this is fun stuff. Uh, in translation to actual developer speak, it's hook field widget info, hook field widget settings form, hook field widget form, and that's it, right? This is how you create custom dashboards for your clients. Pretty cool stuff. At least one field at a time. And there's a couple other... Um, Hooks to uh, to talk about. There was a hook field widget info alter. If you need to alter like an already existing widget, right? So you can alter the stuff that you've already built to you know add in additional information on a different part of the site because that's what the client asked for at the very end of the project, right? You don't have to reinvent stuff. And then we have hook field widget error, which was like the tail end of the communication where hook field uh, validate passes in an array of uh, errors and it just tells the widget, hey, do something with it. And within that hook, all it's basically saying, oh, this element, this element right there, okay, I'm going to make it red and say, hey, you know, you cannot pass go. So, yeah, those are field widgets. Awesome. So, um, like what I was talking about before was the alternative to, you know, doing the system. Uh, going into that slide that I was looking for, this one right here. There's validation that is involved in this, right? Uh, typically, when we just create fields, like an uh, individual text field for the credit card number and an individual text field for the VVC code, uh, CVV code, uh, we probably want to do like some validation checks to make sure that these fields actually exist and they work together. And like this credit card is a MasterCard number, not necessarily like a Discovery card number. Or we want to make sure like the expiration date is not something that's already passed. But remember, the expiration date is not like a compound field that has month and year. They're individual, right? So it be kind of, you know, it becomes very difficult to validate between these two values. Like, it's not to say that it's not possible because you know it is. But again, this is kind of like the approach of I'm going to hack this for a second just to do this thing, right? Um, and again, like I mentioned, like having your entire site basically constructed of sticks and mud, doing this kind of work. Uh, is like the step to wanting to quit doing Drupal because you're so exhausted of like doing all this like crap work. Not because you want to, but you kind of put yourself into a corner where like, I don't know what else to do. The Drupal community says to alter this and to override this theme. Now what? You know what I mean? Drupal would expect you to do uh, this kind of alterations through a field type, but it's not necessarily advertised as much, right? Um, this is how Drupal does it, right? So do as Drupal does. Um, also, you know, with the theming that's involved, I don't want to get too deep into the field formatter stuff, but when all this stuff is put together into like one whole field thing, right, you can theme this stuff out very, very properly. Um, 
if you guys are familiar with uh, theming views, like the, just the default output, right? We have like maybe bits of information that is wrapped in divs and multiple divs, and so you have to do all kinds of really stupid stuff in your CSS to make them all like inline block or make it possible for you to put these two fields together or maybe like float these two and then do something else over there. It's just so ridiculously stupid. But if you override the particular like you know the field template that you need for views, I think it's like uh, views fields template. I don't know. You get all that information all in one place, and then you can create the markup that you want that's suited for your particular design. And so you just like pop in the values here, pop in the values there, wrap the uh, wrap that data with the markup that's appropriate for your thing, and do the CSS like you would normally do, like your um, basically like you're supposed to do, right? Really lightweight. There's nothing hacky going on. You don't have any weird issues with IE. And the same type of deal happens with, uh, you know, with node templates, right? We have all these fields together, but we're required to display them in a certain way that's a little exotic, maybe. It's not straightforward. We're not stacking fields on top of each other because that's ugly. We need to format these things in certain ways. So when we have all this data together in one piece of unit, you can format it however you want with the field formatter. And, you know, again, like I mentioned, these are, like, super swappable. So you can, like, replace one instance of this field with another one. So that's basically the end of the show. Um, thank you. Any uh, questions of sorts? Jeremy. So the credit card box we're showing is essentially three text fields and date fields. So can you steal those widgets from the text module, the date module, um, rather than coding all the text yourself? Yeah, you know, that's a very unfortunate thing that widgets aren't really. Uh, reusable, right? Because a widget was designed for a particular thing. Like, say, for instance, you're uploading an image, right? And, you know, we have the default image, you know, field or widget, right? And that's pretty cool. You have an upload button and we see, like, a little preview. Doing that manually uh, takes a little elbow work, right, to manage those files. But unfortunately, you can't just grab that widget and apply it to your custom form. You can't even apply that widget to, like, I don't know, like a custom field that you create that has an image and maybe like an additional field for like a description or like whatever kind of tags you want, right? So you can't reuse widgets because they're not extendable. And I think that that is a huge flaw with the field system because it's just a series of hooks, right? Earlier today I got into a discussion about like the way hooks work and you know, what would be, um, I think this was in like in the dev panel, where what would be the skill set that would be required, I guess, moving forward in Drupal? And uh, we had said object orientation is the way to go, right? There's a lot of stuff in Drupal 7 that's object oriented because we want to have the ability to override certain methods, right? And when you override a method, it's like an alter and you're creating something on top of it at the same time, right? If you were to do this with a fields widget, say you were to like hook widget info alter with the image field just to get a couple like, I don't know, extra fields in there, another module couldn't necessarily alter on top of that. Right, because you know how we have different weights, and you can't really control like what the um, what the order of these alters are going to happen in. So you have unexpected results. But if the widget field itself was an object-oriented thing, where it's like just a method that's like displaying like the function or the form, we can override that method inside of our module, right? And then some other module can override that alteration to ex actually extend on top of that, right? Um, so. At the current state, no, we can't reuse components, unfortunately. Drupal 8, maybe we can with the plugin architecture. Uh, today, with Drupal 7, there is a way to have fields be object-oriented, like where you could actually ex extend this. Maybe about uh, a month ago, I ran into that issue where you know, we have a lot of features in our site, and I'm implementing a lot of these field types you know, in, our, in our custom code because it's absolutely required. And I started noticing that we have our features here, and then we have custom code there. Because typically when we create these fields, you want it to be in a single module, right? You can add in a bunch of fields within one module, but it kind of gets complicated because you have to do like a lot of switch statements to separate everything out, right? So my hugest pet peeve was there's a lot of junk code here just to get like this right structure in place. And I don't like the idea that we have a lot of custom code out there that really has no use case for anything but this particular feature. I wanted to have that code inside of the feature. Right. So I created a plugin system with CTools where I can just load in fields as the hooks, but as a as an object, right? And so I can load in these files dynamically, and every every hook that we talked about is basically a method inside of you know inside of a, a an object or a class. 
And with that, now you can actually extend stuff like the image field, right? Where you can add in extra, you know, parameters to the form if you wanted to, or any kind of bit or component of that. So the module, uh, it's right now it's just a sandbox. It's called Field Fairy. <laughs> Field Fairy. <laughs> Uh, I have names that are pretty weird. So yeah, the, the field fairy. And uh, yeah, so it kind of describes what it does. It's basically implementing all the field hooks for you. Uh, you write a plugin and you describe what field hooks you want to use and you just put everything inside of methods. And with that, you could actually extend, extend, extend fields, and it makes your code a lot cleaner. And now you could actually put these fields that have no use case but anywhere else inside your features inside of your feature code, finally. Um, so yeah, that's what the fields fairy model does. Any other questions? <laughs> yes? Um, so if I'm using the multi-group model, would you say then ditch that Remind me what multi-group is. Once you basically group fields together as a group, so you can have multiple instances. Ah, uh, yeah. So that's interesting, because that handles one aspect of things being separated, right? In the UI, it's putting these things together so you can have like an add another, add another. Mm -hmm. But how are the fields saved, though? Right? Internally, they're all individual. And every, like, just like when you node load, it goes through a whole process of like all these hooks you know, that gets fired up, right? It's a, it's a pretty intensive process. And for these collections of fields, right, and I think field collections is another module that does that. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, basically, all of these fields has its own bootstrap process, right? It's loading it from the database. It's creating joins, a lot, a lot of joins, because they're all separated in different tables. Like, this doesn't get fixed with those type of modules. But we think they do because they're grouped in the UI. And it totally works that way. But you still can't really theme it the way you want to as far as like you have all the data structured here and it doesn't really translate well in your in your theme layer. So yeah. Those modules help, but uh, not to the extent of you know all the other stuff that was mentioned. And that's not to say that those are bad modules. I'm I'm a huge fan of field collections. I'm a huge fan of like doing that, you know, stuff with like throwing in fields and vertical tabs or something. I think that's really cool. And it works for a lot of sites. I mean it works. But if you if you dig deep enough, you see the flaws, and I have problems with that. I can't I can't deal with that kind of uh, stuff. Um, so yeah, that's my OCD. <laughs> How do you handle this when people realize that they can start sharing fields across multiple companies? Does that break anything? Uh, no, no. Like say for instance, like the uh, the Phonesies module, right? Where we're creating like a mobile phone or like a house number or like a whatever kind of phone number, this can be reused within different content types, no problem, right? Because each one of these uh, instances has its own settings form, right? And each one of these instances probably gets saved into the same database table. Yeah, they do. But the widgets, they work differently. The field formatters, they work differently, right? Each one of those components can get swapped out and they each get their own settings too, so they can behave differently. Right? But you still have that same core structure. So when something goes wrong, there's some sort of bug. There's like one place to fix it and one place only. Pretty sweet. <laughs> All right, so yeah, the Fonzies module is a good example. It's pretty watered down. There's not a whole lot of features in there, right? So it's pretty easy to, uh, to read. Um, I guess I'll, I'll post that in my sandbox too, so you can just go ahead and pull that and just kind of observe the code um, and uh, learn from there, I guess. And uh, yeah, and if, if you really have that need where you need to like build these fields uh, for your site, like these like special use case fields, because that's gonna happen, right? Uh, yeah, we had like a credit card field type of thing, but this could have been something completely weird that your client wanted, right? Uh, you have no use case for this. Um, my, what I would offer as far as like how you'd organize this stuff is to have this information inside of your features module, right? And if you're going to do that, right, you have to have like a lot of switch statements. I would recommend using the fields fairy for that kind of stuff because it's a really easy way to manage multiple fields inside of that particular feature. Yes. You guys got all this stuff? Cool. That's cool. So, uh, <laughs> what was that? 
let's go into part two. Oh, you want to? Oh, actually, part one and part two. One, two. Yeah. Let's do three. Let's do three. You got about ten minutes. No, I do. Damn it. Fields, formatters. Okay. So you want to basically give them a modified field UI? Say that again? You want to like provide your own like branding for the field UI page. Is that it for adding? Um, for this page? Sort of, yeah. Um, but make it, make it much simpler. Like if I wanted to have like step by step, what is it? How would you think about it? How would you approach that? So um, are you talking about this particular page, the field UI, or like say when you're editing a node, or you're adding a node, and you have that form, and it's like super complex, yeah. adding fields to the node. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of in the realm of like either you do like a, a form alter or something, or just out of the box, like your form is ready to go with those type of things, right? You're doing like the multi-step. Um, for multi-step, I would probably use the, the form wizard and C tools. <laughs> yeah, so it was like what multi group and field collection that do basically you're just con you're compiling these things together as a yeah. Field collection is basically fieldable fields. Okay. The UI for it is a little um, different. You don't necessarily see the components of like those collections in here. Like say uh, this uh, all, all these fields here, right, were inside a field group. When you go to that node, you're just going to see uh, credit card info, right? And you're not going to see all the fields that are inside of credit card info. You're not going to see this information right on that bat, right? Right on that entity where it belongs. Uh, what you would have to do is actually go into a different UI, right, that has all the field collections, like it's its own entity, and you would see the fields there. So that actually might be a little more complicated because now your client has to first go to this content type. And then if they wanted to edit one particular component of that, they have to go to a different page altogether. Right? So you don't have that unity anymore. Just one thing to look out for. The the um yeah, I think hmm. I'm not sure how it handles uh the, 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 the display field tab, right, um, that is essentially the field formatters, the manage display tab, right? That's where field formatters come in. So if like field collection is grabbing all the fields, it's basically going to be this UI, but it's, it's in its own path, right, in its own entity. Its entity is the field collection itself. So that stuff doesn't change. And if you're writing field formatters and field widgets, this applies to all of that, right? And that's great because you don't have to, you know, rewrite any code for any particular use case anymore. It's all kind of reusable. So I think at some point you kind of get into like a, a stage where you need to start thinking about abstraction a little bit, right? Because with abstraction you can add in like configurations to make your field work a little more dynamically, right? Make it a little more flexible. And, uh, you know, that, that kind of leads to, you know, why you're doing this in the first place, right? Uh, you could either do the custom code somewhere else or you can create the code inside of like this field, you know, info, whatever, all the hooks that are involved. And it'd be kind of useless if you just have the data just static, right? This functionality is very static. Use case is like one thing only. There's no extendability in it. Like one of the the the, the benefits of doing the, the the field API way is that you have opportunities to create these settings forms and you know to make them a little more dynamic. So I I recommend that you use that ability. All right. So are we done? Or I'm be around. You can ask me questions later. So thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it.
I'm looking for it. It's not popping up. Is that it? That was a really insightful. Um, I had a question.